get this dang lens cap off. It was stuck on there. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Uh, Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Say hi, Toby. Nothing. Toby, acknowledge me. Hey. You're so cute. Yes, you were. I love you so much. Okay, you can go back to sleep. I hope you're good. I'm great. I am. Um, I did a bad thing. So I'm sitting here editing tomorrow's video, today's video, the one that you would be watching right now. And it, 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 here's what happened. I was filming earlier today and my memory card ran out of space. And I was like, well, that's weird. Why would it? Because I thought it had like 40 gigs free on it. So I was like, okay, well I put in another memory card and then I brought all my files in here. It's actually, there's like an hour and a half's worth of footage in here. I've already cut about half an hour, just like doing rough cuts. Rough cuts are when you go through and you just basically get out the silent spots or any spots where you maybe had to repeat something cause stumbled on some words. It's like the first pass of editing, really easy, basic stuff, but takes a while. I do that and then I do a color pass and then an audio pass, any voiceovers, like all that stuff. It's kind of fun. So here's what happened. I am, I've been bulk filming. I want to make it so that there can be like one video per month during the winter time that was filmed now outside. Just because I, one, that would give me a week off because during the winter, the dry air, I tend to get like a, my voice gets kind of hoarse. So it would give me a week off once a month from having a weekly video. And it would be nice to have the scenery from outdoors versus in my grow space. So uh, I was filming those videos in 4K at 60 frames per second, which is like super high resolution, takes up a lot of memory. And I didn't remember to reset that. So tomorrow's vlog is like 55 gigs right now. It'll be smaller than that when it's done. What I'm gonna have to do is do a rough cut export it at a smaller frame rate, do a bunch of resolution stuff. The issue here is that if I had like two or three more days in advance to get the video up, not a big deal, but I don't. And <laughs> when it's all said and done with this resolution, it's still gonna be like a 30 something gig video. Say I were to stay up to like four o'clock in the morning editing, I don't do that anymore, but I used to. It would still take like probably a solid, I'd say five to six hours for the computer to export that into a single file and then uploading a 30 gig video onto YouTube. I don't even know how long that would take. Usually the vlogs are like eight to 16 gigs and that takes like an, anywhere from 55 minutes to two and a half hours, depends on how big it is. 30 something gigs? I don't think that even if I were to work on this round the clock that by the time I'd want the video to come out 4 to 5 p.m. on Saturday. I don't think it would be ready. I don't think it'd be ready till Sunday. So here I am instead just making a different video talking and rambling about how I just, I totally screwed things up. Oops. And give you a rundown. The video will still come out. Like I said, even if I were to stay up all night and work on this nonstop, it's not going to be done and ready to go up in time for the Saturday video. That's okay. We can still, you're not missing much. I didn't get a lot done this week. All hope is not lost. We can still like have a little bit of a chat. It is dark outside but the electricity is working. So there's some lights out there. We can kind of, we can do a rundown on what happened and maybe go over some FAQs. Hey, pumpkin, can you say hi? No, you've been busy sleeping. She's been so sleepy yesterday was her gotcha day. So we played and played and played and played and she is so worn out today. She's not one of those typical cats that usually sleeps all day and then stays up all night. She like, stays up most of the day, hangs out with me, and then sleeps through most of the night with me. Not all night, she wakes me up sometimes. But I have a feeling tonight, she's probably, Pumpkin, you gonna keep me up tonight? Such an attitude, doesn't she, Toby? You wanna go outdoors? You wanna go outside? Yeah, let's go outside. And it's like, really? Nighttime, we get to go outside and play? Hell yeah, let's go outside. My main focus that was in the vlog this week was basically just that I remembered that it's time to move certain plants into the shade, like the Thanksgiving cactus. If you have Christmas cactus, same thing. And then I pulled my amaryllis out from the sun and moved over here to the shade so it can kind of start to move into its own little dormancy. Need to, to go ahead and slow its growth down so I can move it into the dark and then wake it back up here in a few weeks and let it do its thing. It's, this is something I usually do in like mid-August so I just I forgot somebody actually commented on my video about the Thanksgiving cactus and that's what reminded me that oh my gosh it's I need to do that I need to move mine into the shade and then I took my really big Thanksgiving cactus and uh, 
it needed a repot. It had so much flood damage on it and it was getting overwatered from the people who were helping me. I think the main problem was flood damage. And well, you'll see what went down with that. I ended up pulling it apart and I'm gonna let it dry for a few days and get that repotted. And then I potted up my Alocasia Morocco. Again, not gonna go into too much detail there because I'm still gonna get that video out. There's just no way it would be ready today when you're watching this, not a chance. And I walked around talked about a few plants that are looking kind of fun right now and uh, talked about how the electricity is working again. There's finally power again and I got some more lights ordered. The spotlights that I have down here, I've really been enjoying them and I couldn't find <laughs> the brand of them. Like they disappeared from my purchase details on Amazon. Well, they didn't actually disappear. What happened is that somebody got these for me for my birthday and I forgot that, so I kept looking for them in my Amazon cart, and then I realized, oh wait, I didn't, I didn't purchase them. They come in sets, and I want to get another set down over here where those elephant ears are, and then potentially a set in this berm down. Let me turn that light on. I don't know why I really bother, because that entire light fixture down there needs some work. It only has one light bulb in it that's on right now, but that's better than nothing the screws are stripped on this fixture so i need to get those drilled out i just got a new drill that's in last week's vlog but i was thinking about putting the other row of spotlights in this berm it would kind of light up those pedicets that are down there I'll get closer i have to remember it's nighttime all these pedicets it would light those up i don't know how like how worth it that would be though because it's like, I would rather them light up the laurels that are over here. It might look better to use, like, an LED outdoor tape underneath these, perhaps. I don't know. Like, I don't really care about lighting those up. But if they're staked down on the ground, then obviously those are going to catch more of the light than this berm will. And this looks much brighter on camera than it is in real life. Like, standing here, I can't... I can barely even see the shrub in front of me. I can barely see that. Well, I kind of can when I take my eyes, but you get it. I'm thinking about putting another row of lights down here. I'm not sure, because I'm only going to order two more sets. They come connected with four lights a piece. I've been trying to decide where I want to put those. I already have the one set strung out right here, which looks much more impressive when that spotlight isn't on. I, it would make sense to put some down here, like have some right here under all of the elephant ears and everything. I think that would look very nice, but I feel like having four of them over here might be excessive <laughs> and unnecessary, but they don't come in singles. They come strung together as four and the rest of the stuff down there doesn't need to be lit up. So uh, I gotta think about that one. Oh, Toby spotted a frog. You better leave it alone, Toby. It's too late for swimming. So yeah, I have the color changing cluster right here and uh, I could put another one right here and then another one right over here. And that would look, I think, pretty cool. But then what about everything over here? It's this time of year, that doesn't really matter. I could go ahead and light up everything back there and worry about this next year, especially since next year, I hope to do a lot more with this area. I had big plans for it this year, but you know, all the stuff happened and it looks beautiful. You know, when I had family come in town, I gave them all the elephant ear bulbs and told them where to put everything, and they did a great job. I'll get that old palm trunk out of there and either put a hardy variety of palm here, or perhaps some sort of trucked yucca, yucca, however you want to say it, in this spot that would look kind of cool. Yeah, I'll worry about that next year. But since it's, like, not that really plants it up right now it looks cool but it does it doesn't need that much i think lighting up the undersides of these bananas over there and right here would probably look better yeah that's all just spurred from me mentioning that the electricity is working out here so there's light again i'm so happy about that i love the garden being lit up at nighttime it's one of my favorite times to be outside just love seeing how the light reflects and bounces off of all the plants and the various intricacies that you don't really notice during the daytime like the way the fronds on the queen palms, how they're, they have an indention on the inside. Those catch the light, and then you get to see all the various reflections, and especially along the trunks of the palms, all the different textures and the way the flowers look. You get it. It's pretty. That's all it comes down to. There just, there hasn't been that much going on. I've been trying to take it easy because I'm still trying to avoid having to have the next surgery. I don't know anything about that yet. I won't find out till this upcoming Wednesday, so a few days after this video comes out. If I have to have the surgery, it's not a big deal. It's just, it's gonna be a very little spot that needs a graft on it, nothing compared to the ones before. I'm not concerned about the surgery at all. It's more just the having to return to being a human lump for a month afterwards and holding still and, yeah, 
it just is what it is. I, one advantage to having the surgery, though, is it really speed up the rest of my healing time. So yeah, I'll have to sacrifice a month of being back on my feet. I've only been back on my feet for like two weeks, and even still, I just had to be careful with what I'm doing. But in the long run, it would still probably be better if they want to do that. So I, I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. That seems to be the theme of 2020, right? Like we don't, nobody knows what the hell's going on. We're just doing our best to get by. Next week, if there's no video out, that just means I had a surgery. Who knows? No big deal. Nah, I don't think they would... I can't imagine that I'd have the surgery next week. I'd be surprised. The first surgery was rushed, the second one was rushed, the third one was rushed because they were all kind of emergency situations, but I don't think this is. But again, I have no idea. I have no re nothing to base that off of at all. That's all stuff I talked about in the other video. I don't want to repeat myself too much there. There was uh, one thing that I've been getting a lot of questions about, so I thought I'd just go ahead and talk about it and it's the people asking what I'm doing with my palm trees. I have to answer this every year so it would be smart for me to just make a dedicated video to this so I can say hey go watch that video but I don't you know even if I do that there's still always new people around and I don't mind answering the question it's pretty simple and easy. What fits in the garage goes in the garage. What's too big for the garage like the Alexander palm you can't even see right now. Hey frog where are you going frog? We can't be friends? fine. Palms like this one, the Alexander Palm, this actually gets stored in a greenhouse during the winter time. There's a few services actually in the area in St. Louis and over the river in St. Charles. Probably some more that I don't know of, but there are companies that'll come out, take your big plants, they load them on a truck, store them in a greenhouse for you during the winter time, and they bring them back. So that's what, that's what happens with anything that's too big to get in the house. This one like, I, I think it would fit in my entryway. However, the pot, that doesn't fit through my door. So even if I could get it in the house, uh, it, I, just, I don't think it would work out very well. Used to fit, long time ago, but no, those days are long gone. This thing outgrew the house years ago. These Adenidia palms down here on each end of the pool, those go in my entryway of the house. So they don't go in the growth space, I just keep them in the house. I have the other pots that these pots sit inside of raised up inside of those pots. There's a big reservoir for water and uh, that worked out really well last year. So I'm going to do it again this year. The foxtail palm, which is hiding all the way back there. You see the foxtail? Yeah, that goes in with these Adenidia palms into the entryway of my house. So like I said, if it fits in the garage, it goes in the garage. I take the most tropical plants in first, meaning the Adenidia palms heliconias, coconut palms, anything that really just doesn't like any cold at all, that goes in first when nighttime temperatures start to dip into the 50s. I get those in as soon as I can. Oh, and the Eureka palm, the mealybug monster. Wow, it's really hazy over there. I'm not surprised by it. it stinks out here. Someone's smoking something. And then the queen palms, the mule palms, which are going to be really hard to see, but they're the ones on the other end of the pool down there. You can kind of see them. Those tend to go in around the second round. The mule palms I leave out a pretty long time. And then the windmill palms, which are all kind of tucked away and hidden right now, but they're the most cold hardy and they stay out the longest. Last year they were outside almost all year. The alocasias and calocasias, if they are ones that aren't intended to be annuals, I'll dig them up and either keep them growing or store them dormant. I'm probably going to be keeping almost all of them dormant this winter. That actually worked out really well with my alocasias. It might help if we went down there and looked at them. Hopefully you'll be able to see them. Yeah, the alocasias. These are colocasias right here. Behind them there are some alocasias. You can kind of see them sticking up here. The portoras over there. Come on. And then there's just some regular ones over there. With these I just cut them back and they just have kind of a stump. It's hard to see. But I just storm dormant, no soil, nothing. I just let them chill on the cool side of my garage in a dark location and then plant them up in the spring and boom, they pop back up and look great. And then all of these, these die back. They come back every year. And over here, everything's gonna die back except for the queen palm that'll come inside. And then this monster of a croton that's over here that has to come in. Those can't stay out here. They're not even planted in the ground. Their pots are lowered into the ground, but I just pull them up and take them in. And everything else just gets mulched and protected. Gingers get cut back. Annuals I'll pull and I mean hopefully, I don't know what this fall is going to look like, but hopefully I'll be able to get those sorts of things done. It 
I prefer to get a lot of the cleanup done in the fall as opposed to in the spring. Eh, we'll see what happens. The one nice thing, not one nice thing, one of the nice things about St. Louis where I live, we're smack dab in the middle of the country. And because of that, the winters, they're not great. They're, it's just really ugly here during the winter time and it can get really cold. We'll drop down to zero degrees Fahrenheit and below that sometimes. But there will be other days mixed in where it'll be in the 50s and 60s. And heck, back in March this year, it was warmer in March than it was in April or most of May, which was great because it got all those banana trees back there and everything to wake up and gave them basically a couple more months of growing than they would have had had they not gotten that heat until May like they normally would have. So you get little breaks here and there during the winter time is all I was going to say where it's nice and it gives you something to do outside. Generally January probably not gonna happen pretty chilly but in February not so bad March not so bad but it's also different every single year. Those nice days I'm sure I'll be so much better by then and I'll be looking forward to coming outside and pulling up annuals and things that have rotten down to the ground. Ideally, yeah, I'd get it done before then, but yeah, I just, I have no idea. I've learned to not plan things out too far in advance. That, just, that, that hasn't been working out for me very well this year, or for any of us this year, right? This hanging basket, yeah, this, this looks like garbage. I need to pull that down and just say forget it that didn't work out this year i have other things i could put in there i don't think there's a point in doing that in september with you know it's only gonna have like six to eight weeks left of growing actually six to eight weeks isn't that bad maybe i should just throw some creeping jenny and like a mum or something cheap in the middle of that and give that a different shot what am i trying to say i don't know why i even bothered opening my mouth when i didn't even have a complete thought in my head okay coming back to the lighting topic i'm going to go ahead and bring my exposure up which will make things more grainy but you'll at least be able to see what i'm talking about having the pool here makes it harder to get things in focus or not to not be too dark that's what i was trying to say so back to the lighting like i was saying I do think it would look pretty cool to get lights up under both clumps of bananas because then they'd be changing colors at nighttime. That's probably what I'll do. That's where I'll put the other sets is under the banana trees. That'll look neat. Turn off that other spotlight over the bananas so you can actually see what these color changing lights look like at nighttime. Yeah, so as far as the spotlight goes, the color changing one, is, did I go too far? Let me bring it down a little bit. Is that better? I don't know. We'll see when it's actually like up on the editing screen. but. So that fun color changing wave underneath both of those, they'll light up the trunks on the other sides of the foliage. I think that would look nice. I mean, not fancy, kind of tacky and gaudy even. <laughs> That's kind of my vibe. I'm okay with that. Give me color, lights, flashing lights, like everywhere. Turn this entire backyard into like a big rave and I would just, I would be in heaven. He <laughs> came here for elegance and grace and like well tidy manicured gardens. You're in the wrong place. I've been keeping things pretty tight this year in the garden but still formal not really my thing not in my backyard I do that in my front yard backyard my yard's like a mullet the front business the back party time yeah I think that's everything I know I had talked about doing fall planters this weekend but I just I can't find the kale and cabbage that I want to do my planters so it's just going to have to wait another week or maybe two and that's okay because it's still kind of warm here for the kale and cabbage anyways and anything i plant up i'd have to stick into the shade so it doesn't bolt so eh, it's fine it can wait another week even if i have to have the surgery i can have somebody else fill the planters up for me and i can tuck things into them that shouldn't be a problem yeah i can't believe i'm already working on planning things out for fall and winter like hardcore i haven't even talked about it that much here on the channel i have all kinds of things lined up for the growth space not like exciting things just like ways to improve on it from last year and the people have asked about my process with all that it's not the kind of thing that i can do like one dedicated video on i mean i guess i could talk through it but i couldn't show it because it all happens in steps that are spread out over a few weeks so i don't know how i would vlog it and dedicate a video i could figure it out maybe i'll do that this year we'll see but it's not that complicated i kind of explained it the most tender plants go in first i put styrofoam down on the ground so they're not in contact with the cement i just you know over the course of a few weeks just move things in really the moving everything in process not a big deal it might be this year since i'm not supposed to be lifting heavy things but uh, i have people around who will be able to help i'll try and figure something out if things were better with my health 
right now. I don't hate saying that, but that's technically what's going on. Then I could like do a mock-up of moving the plants inside, but that's just, I'm really trying to take it easy right now. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, the doctor said resume normal activity, but nothing too strenuous, but you know, like I can like start breaking a sweat and those things. Then my follow-up all of a sudden, I was having great progress and he's like, no, things aren't good anymore. <laughs> and you're not healing as fast as you should. So that's the only thing that changed. So I'm trying to really take it easy. And I think that it's actually working. I, I said, I'm kind of indifferent to the surgery. Anytime you go under anesthesia, that's not great. Something to take seriously. Ideally, I would like to not, but there are pros to it. It would speed things up um, as far as the overall rest of the healing goes. So might be a good thing if they need to do it. I don't know, but, um, just to make things better i'm trying to not do too much so this week i really didn't do much oh so yeah there we are we're caught up on some things and it was kind of I, I kind of enjoyed coming out here and just walking around talking about the plants and some things at night time it's not going to look super fantastic probably it's going to be a little bit grainy but that's okay it's still fun i like seeing the lights speaking of lights these are supposed to be changing colors what's that about and i'm also noticing that this end is on light blue and that end is on green i don't you know if everything going on i don't even care whatever <laughs> there's another example of broken things that need to be fixed how do you even fix that i have no idea if they're new lights they got put in last year but they're not behaving that's for dang sure it still looks pretty i don't really care and i really i can't even get in there i got approved to swim and i had a little swim and it was fun it was weird feeling water on my back because it's been like i don't seven or eight months since that i've like even been able to shower with water running over my back that was cool but the thing is the water is really cold so it's, it's i'm just like you know what? it's fine it's fun to look at next year or maybe potentially i'll heat it up this weekend and get in there i don't know we'll see those are champagne problems they're not really issues right anyways that's that's gonna do it just a fun who knows how many minutes of just what <laughs> rambling hope everybody's doing well sorry i couldn't get the regularly scheduled vlog app, but it's okay. It'll get out uh, either in a few days or it'll go up next weekend. Maybe if, you know, they decide to do the surgery, then that's what I'll do and just I'll be a week behind on the vlogs, like time-wise, chronologically for like a week and a half, but that's not a big deal. I'm gonna go because as I've already established, it's a uh, nighttime and I need to get this video done for tomorrow. So hope everybody's doing well. Uh, thank you everybody for all your support. Everybody's just so lovely. Such a wonderful group of people around here. I actually did enjoy being able to come out here and look at the plants at nighttime. I thought that that's kind of fun. I enjoy that. When I get the rest of the lights and we'll do a nighttime garden tour. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. But of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. What is this? 22 minutes? Nah, that's not, that's not how we do things in Saturday videos. Yeah, and that's actually okay. One of the things with editing these videos is sometimes you go through them and then uh, you're done with it and you go, well, I wish I had elaborated on this or on that or done something different. So there are a couple things I was going to circle back on. Pumpkin, say hi. Thank you for your enthusiasm, Pumpkin. And that is especially true with the garden tours. Like with the last garden tour, I forgot to go over the porch pots. And there isn't, who's leaving stuff in my door? There isn't that much to say. Here they are. Kind of got to look at them in the Creeping Jenny video. The impatience are doing well. The windmill palms doing great. But the thing that I was going to update on were these hanging baskets. Uh, right? So if you don't remember, I last minute decided to do some hanging baskets just because I had the plants around to go ahead and do it. And uh, here's what happened with those. I wasn't expecting much to even happen. And the person who's helping me out came over and hung them up and put them up a little bit too high. The impatience are doing okay. The diamond frost euphorbia, or might be mountain snow. I can't remember which euphorbia I put in there, but doing well. The um, super tunia snow, fine. Snow vista, vista snow, whatever it is, I don't know. But it's the sweet potato. This one sweet potato vine in particular, really loving things that one not so much but these look different i think that this is one of those lime marguerite dwarfs and um i don't well this is it's just a different one might just be a regular lime marguerite i'm not sure it is definitely a loving life though it's even starting to vine onto the back of this chair here things are a little foggy and hazy it's extremely humid out here yeah and there's the 
other one. Again, not much to say with these. I thought I should give like a midway update since they will be updated in the final garden tour or not the final i think there will probably be an october one but you know september and then it'll be kind of weird if two months have passed so there's a little update on those and then if you remember i pulled the sweet potato vines out of these they were massive like so massive they were drinking a lot of water i need to turn my drip down there's like algae and stuff growing on the ground here because the the uh creeping jenny like there's just not as much pulling the water out as would uh, as what was in there before. That was really hard to say for some reason. Well, I took those sweet potato vines and just stuck them in the ground. They had the tiniest roots on them. I'm not even exaggerating. They were like this big. I showed them in that video and I just assumed I was like, well, these probably won't make it. And yet here they are. And I did nothing. I just put them in the ground and made sure that there was a drip head near them. And they're <laughs> like, it doesn't look great, but I just, I don't want to throw them away and I had nothing else to do with them. So that's what's going on there. It looks kind of messy and weedy, but it's still, like I said, I just didn't want to throw them away. Okay, so there's that. A nice foggy lens update. The windmill palms are doing really well. There's a new leaf coming out here on the front. And this one has been putting up more and more foliage. I went ahead and did a little bit of amending. The only thing else about this one, that has some mealybug on it. Which is bizarre. I've never had to deal with mealybugs on my windmill palms before. But I'm not worried about it. Because these will be out here getting lots of hard freezes. I'm, I'll give it a spray with a soap. And, you know, do my best to get it out of there. But... Uh, yeah, the cold, that'll handle that. They won't be exposed to my other plants, and I haven't seen them on this other one, which is clearly growing a lot faster than the other one. There are just different sizes when I got them. This one will catch up with the other one soon enough. I don't know if it'll catch up, but it'll get there. This one growing very, very, very well. I'm wondering what variety of Trachycarpus it is, because I mean, they were sold as Fortunais, which is like the most common of the windmill palm, but it has this fuzz along the stem that I don't usually see with the Fortunais. So, you know, there are lots of mixes and crosses. And there are a lot of different varieties with these windmill palms. So that's probably all that is. They can have their own little personalities that way. Oh, oh, excuse you. It's like my own house was telling me to shut the heck up. Come on, Tuck. Let's go, Tuck. I could talk windmill palms all day. There's so much to say because there are multiple species and uh, within those species there are a decent amount of cultivars also. Can I get in here? So when you have just like the Trachycarpus fortuni, which is your typical windmill palm, you can have growth characteristics and differences between the different ones. Usually based on seed source, like the location where the plant comes from, where it was initially grown, that can influence the hardiness. And then there are some crosses out there and those sorts of things but I'm looking at this one and then I checked out I have another one that's like tucked way back there you can't even see it and they both have a few stems that have that fuzz on them so I guess I just never noticed it before but sometimes when we have plants for a really long time we kind of habituate to their appearances and just start to I don't want to say forget their beauty but can end up kind of looking past things a little bit that have been right in front of us the whole time so that was just that was just me being dumb I think that that a little bit of fuzz is normal. I just never noticed before. Tuck, you gonna say hi to everybody? You gonna say hi? You'd be feeling good today, aren't you, Tuck? Yes, you are. You're feeling good. It's a nice day. It's a nice day for old dogs. Oh, there's a nice big flower on the hibiscus today. This one, a few months ago, I put it up in a video and the flower was more of an orange color. The temperatures have been all over the place and there's some confusion as to the variety name. I still can't remember. I have it written down in my phone somewhere. But I always forget, but it has just the prettiest coral pink semi-double flowers on it. Makes me very happy, and unfortunately the flower it opened this time, facing away from everything. That's okay. It'll bud out from around the plant. This was supposed to get repotted back in May and never did, so I should probably give this a cut back to encourage it to flush out a little bit more so that it has a little bit more foliage to work with in the winter time when it's inside. And it provides a little bit more of like a safety net in case things aren't as good in there as I would like them to be for the hibiscus. The thing I was going to circle back on was last night when I was talking about the alocasias here, which I noticed when I was editing, for some reason I called them alocasias for a while. Don't know what that was about, but either way, there's the portors here, the others in the back, and uh, what I was saying is that I cut the foliage off, I dig them up, and then just store them bare root and dry, but you weren't actually able to see what I was talking about down here with those trunks because it was dark so this one right here it's a little bit difficult to see 
and it's slightly curved and that's okay they can handle that this one probably has about two feet of this i'm gonna call it trunk it's really pseudo stem that leads up to all that foliage that has nutrient storage in it and in the past up until last year i had kept these elephant ears growing behind my uh my pond in the grow space and they did well there and it looked really cool but then last year I went ahead and just left the green ones growing and uh, tried storing the portoras, these right here that have the more purple vein on them, a darker leaf. Those I left dormant and they did so well that I don't see a reason to go through the trouble of trying to keep the others growing and watered this year. They're all going dormant, which will be great because that's going to open up a, uh, gosh, I want to say probably a about a 30 inch deep by roughly six foot wide area in the grow space for other plants. I didn't really get a ton of other like house plants and tropicals this year, but it'll still be nice to have that extra space, not have things crammed too close together. And Lord knows if there's a space back there to put plants in, I'll fill it up. Might be a good spot for some more grow lights and that's where I can keep the hibiscus, right Tuck? Maybe, yes, no? You just wanna go back inside and do your old man thing, don't you? All right, give me a few minutes, Tuck. And then I realized I spent a de <laughs> like, I was gonna say a little bit of time, a lot of time talking about the lights out here. These are, I think they were called Viva Bright. I hadn't mentioned what they were called before because I tend to like to use things for a little while before I say, hey, here's this product. Because what if it turns out to be garbage? But they've been out here since May. They're app controlled through Bluetooth. And they're a little glitchy with certain things. Like they're, I have them set to turn on and off and some days they don't, like you can see, they're still on right now and they're not supposed to be. So they're not perfect, but they're holding up better than a lot of the other lower priced RGB LEDs I've tried, but these aren't as low priced. These were some, actually some of the more expensive ones that I've tried, but they're still not like top of the line. But I'll put a link to those down in the description. I have an Amazon associate Thing down there so i do make a commission off of those things but it's not like it's not significant and feel free to like you don't have to use my link if you don't want to that's not a big deal i'll have those and then just other things i use frequently and get asked about a fair amount down in the description i'll try and make sure that i have those things in the description especially during winter time i got a lot of questions about grow lights and i think it is time to prune off these leaves right here these two leaves right here they've just they've been driving me crazy for a while do my best to come in here it's kind of a hard spot to get to get those out of there i'll cut them back a little bit further later there we go i couldn't see my orchid i didn't like that and it wasn't just that i couldn't see my orchid i have other orchids back here that could use some light and one of them has a teeny tiny itty bitty spike on i'm gonna pull that out so you can see it get these out of the way look at that i don't know if it's going to focus because it is tiny I'll take it back there slowly bring it in those little white dots. Oh, those are gonna be so cute. This is an uh, Ascocentum, I believe is what it, it is. It's an Ampilla Cium uh, Fuchsia. So uh, I'm sure I butchered the pronunciation of all of that. But I used to have one of those and I loved it. It just, it's it, it's basically, it's like a little mini Vandacious Orchid. That's what it is. With just the cutest little pink flowers. You know, everything happened. I got sick. I lost a lot of my orchids. So that was one that I was like, I'm going to treat myself to it. I've, I don't know. I've had this one for maybe a month and it appears to be happy because those are new. Those are new spikes down there. New little flower buds that didn't have those when it showed up. And then I have another one back here. It's an, um, it's an S. It's another one of the. I can't remember the name. I'm sorry. So it's kind of pointless to talk about. I'll look it up, and if I do an orchid video, then I'll talk about it more in depth. That was all just me being excited about these teeny tiny itty bitty little flower spikes on there. And I'm also seeing something else that I keep forgetting to do. My pink princess. This thing. <sighs> it's been throwing out pink leaves all summer, and simply just from forgetting to cut this off, I basically wasted its growing season. This plant could have done so much growing, but instead it was one of those things that I just kept forgetting to get done. What a waste. It's important to try and write things down. I mean, she's still cute, still pretty. I might still like pot it up just so I can enjoy it for a while, but you know, there's not much you can do with this pink foliage. There's not much point to it. Usually when I cut this philodendron, it's because it's reverting. It loves to revert it reverts all the time 
but this time it's because it's just kept putting up all pink foliage. Actually, I need to pull this. It's not getting enough light back here. As the seasons change, this, there's just like, it's really, really dark back there. So that probably would help it grow a little bit faster too. I need to move that. Okay, editing Jeff back again. I am off my game this week. I forgot to mention with the philodendrons, I know traditionally you want to go at least two nodes below where you have all the pink or the reversion. The, there were two dead leaves on that nub that you may have noticed, and that was just those wharf leaves that were originally fine. They were partially pink and partially green and that's why I it looks like I cut it way too high but I don't think I did if I need to cut it some more I will I'm more concerned with this philodendron in the aspect of um it needs more light you saw it it doesn't look good it's tucked back there it's not great it's not good but it's just it's what happens sometimes those things happen it's been a weird year I apologize to the airway lovers who I've disappointed I'm so sorry now we just get back into this. Okay, so we caught up on a few other things. Was able to clarify on some other things. Like the, the big thing, the main thing, the main question I've been getting has been what am I doing with my tropicals during the winter time? They go inside. That's the short story. Grow space house or the greenhouse. And uh, that's all that is. And I, I generally every year vlog all of that because like I mentioned, it's a multi-step process it goes on for a few weeks so it's not like it's something where it's just like boom everything's inside so that's generally the vlogs october through november it's me doing all of that and prepping the area it just and it depends every year the falls are different so and if i have that surgery i don't know what's going to happen so this might be the one year where i don't film that much of it but if that does end up being the case then i'll try and like compile my old videos together into one so it's more clear but generally you know the vlogs are just what's going on in my life and pretty much like two weeks from now until it, the, all the plants are in it that's what consumes my life is getting things ready to go inside and actually getting them inside weather over the next several days is supposed to be pretty mild and nice like mid to upper 70s low 80s i think i'll be doing my very last fertilizing it's like maybe a week late to be doing it but i'm gonna do it anyways it should be okay Generally, like four to six weeks from the first frost is when I like to do that. And where I live, they usually say October 15th is the first frost. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes it's a little bit earlier and then it'll like warm up again, but we'll have like two days of colds or it'll be like all the way into November. So it's just that I have no idea what's going on. I don't think anybody does, especially with all the tropical storms and everything region down in the Atlantic and in the Gulf. It really influences the weather up here once they come up and hit the coast so i, I don't know let's see we're just going with the flow that's gonna do it hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you wow two outros in one video this feels weird i don't know what's coming as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye